Hey, hello there. This is going to be the second build tutorial on how to do mosaic tiles in geometry nodes. So in the previous one, we had quite a simple solution on how to generate these kinds of tiles um, with a Voronoi texture. And today I have three other methods on how to do it. So I'm exploring a bit on what is the best way, but they all kind of work, but for different situations. So in this example, I'm using hexagonal tiles. Uh, what I'm doing first is I create this hexagon pattern. You can go over this if you want to copy it. Like there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube on how to create a hexagon tile pattern or a hexagon pattern that you can use for all kinds of uh, purposes. So that's over here. I'm setting the size amount X and uh, y and the size of the hexagons. I can also make them into triangles. Uh, then I'm creating instances on points and I'm using a cylinder with six sides, which is just a hexagon. Then I'm translating the instances uh, with a random value. I'll put it into the vector and it display displaces them a little bit. So it looks a little bit more random, like they are put in there by hand. And then a translate instances with a noise texture to give it a little bit more of that natural feel. And a rotate instances to make them not all face the same, uh, face the same way. So here you can see you get this uh, offset or this jittering in the uh, rotation and in the reflection. So that becomes a little bit more realistic because real tiles also don't have exactly the same uh, plane that they're in. They rotate a little bit or they have a little bit of a, a wobble in the surface because of the baking. So that's what I'm doing. And here uh, I'm storing the color by the image. I'm taking the position, scale it, and then adding uh, 0.5 to put it in the middle of this uh, area. I can also uh, just scale the image as you can see. And here I can translate it to move it in another position. But I want it in the middle, so I put an add 0.5 and then I'm using the image to capture the color uh, in the instance domain and that is used in the material. So how the material looks like is just an attribute with that color set to instancer, and then uh, it will take the points uh, of uh, this image and give them a solid color, as you can see. So this is one of the methods to make a hexagonal uh, pattern or hexagonal mosaic pattern. And this looks a little bit too much like a grid uh, maybe you like it, but maybe if you want more randomness, uh, what I did is make this setup and there it uh, finds a position where none of these spheres are overlapping. So you can uh, change these spheres into tiles. Um, to be clear, this is all still a work in progress uh, and I'm going to make tools out of them. You can already download these on Blender Market if you want to play with them or you can just uh, copy them as you can see what I've done here. So this is fairly simple. I'm using a grid and an icosphere as instance. And then what I'm doing, I'm using uh, this from a tutorial from Antagma and they were using a simulation uh, zone, but I'm using a repeat zone. So you don't have to wait until it simulates uh, all the way. You can just use the iterations to how many you want. So the more iterations, the uh, ac more accurate it will be. But above a certain uh, amount of iterations, you don't see any improvements anymore. So if you put it really high, it also takes longer. But this is what it does. Like you can, uh, the incoming geometry, I, or I make uh, distribution of points on this surface. Then I'm merging by distance and you can set the distance here. You can see it when I go up. Uh, you can take the geometry proximity, then subtract it by the position, scale it, 
by the scale that I plugged in here. Uh, set the position by that uh, vector and then set the position again to stick them onto the plane again. Like if you make a donut, all the points will stick to the donut and don't drift off. You will see it in this, uh, how it works exactly by this uh, tutorial from Antagma. Really good tutorial, helped me a lot as well. Take a look on the channel, they also have amazing tutorials. Um, but I used this, uh, let's go to the other file, a repeat zone to make it a little bit more easy to work with. Then I'm uh, taking all these points and I set the instances that are coming in here. And then I'm joining the geometry with the plane that was already there. So you can also see the grid. Um, and then I'm storing the colors again by the instances and then setting this material and the material looks like this again. Just an attribute with the color set to instancer and then it takes all these colors of the image that are uh, put in here in the image texture. So that is method number two. Uh, that also works quite well. Uh, and method number three, three works even better to my opinion. It's a little bit more uh, complex as you can see, but also the result is much nicer because you are getting, uh, let's go to the top camera, uh, from an image it really makes different areas of tiles with a different rotation. So it feels more like it's really uh, laid in patches. And you have that in some cases when you see floor tiling with uh, uh, making mosaics, you get a little bit more of these effects. And how I do this is I'm starting off with a grid. Again, I give it a lot of vertices. So these vertices can be, uh, let's go to the viewer so we can see what is happening. There's a lot of vertices, so it takes a while. You have this plane with a lot of squares, as you can see. And here, when I move this up, I'm first taking the image, then uh, blurring the attribute by 50, and then using a map range. Uh, to use only the Z in the uh, positive and in the negative position. And when I set the position, you can see that you get an offset from this image. So now when I go to preview mode, we get layers. So what I'm doing here as well is I use a stepped linear. And that's what's making these steps happen in the image. So you can have a gradient. Uh, and then the image will do this still. So it makes all these different areas. So if we take top view, uh, maybe orthographic, you can see you have these patches. So what I do next is I delete the geometry that is not planar or it's not in the exact, uh, in this exact plane. So everything in between I delete then you get all these different patches, which are separate from each other. And then when I set the position back to zero, they all collapse. And now you have different patches, which are generated from the color image. The color image that I'm using looks like this. Here we have the fish. It's just an AI generated fish logo. I need it uh, a little bit like an illustrator kind of drawing. Uh, which is already uh, has color patches. So uh, then the mosaic works a little bit better. Um, I can also show you the example with a photo. It still works, but it looks, looks a little bit less like a, a hand tiled mosaic. But now you know how to make these separate areas. And then I am capturing the indices of these islands. So I use mesh island, capture attribute, and then the point of this island. And I'm using that to drive a map range or two map ranges for the uh, for deleting geometry by a Voronoi texture. And when I move this up, 
a little bit slow, then you can see what happens. It takes away all the tiles. So the Voronoi, when set to distance to edge and 2D, um, it will get this pattern. And I'm using a color map to uh, get this small line in between the tiles. And then uh, you get all these separate tiles. And uh, next thing you can do is extrude them and make them real tiles. You can see here which settings I use. Uh, so this is for this map range. Um, I'm rotating them by the uh, captured mesh island. So every island has a different rotation. So you can see this one is this direction. This one is a more straight direction. And it does that by this factor rotate and uh, this map range. And this map range sets the scale, different scale of these islands. So you can set these two to the same amount, then everything is scaled the same. You can set these two to the same amount and then everything has the same rotation. But next, uh, we are deleting more stuff by uh, the index of the face because there are still some lines here as you can see and by inverting the face uh, index by using a, a knot boolean knot and then the edge then i'm deleting these tiny little edges and i'm only left with the faces and then next i am capturing the position so explaining what happens in these next uh, next steps. I'm capturing the position of how everything is now. Then I'm scaling everything to zero. So all these tiles will be scaled to a point. And then I'm storing the color of that point. Because if I don't, it will take more pixels and you get gradients within these tiles. But I want every tile to have a single color. And that's why I'm scaling them to zero. And by capturing the position and then setting the position back again, I scale them up on how they were. I'm also capturing a position here uh, when they are scaled at zero. And I'm using that here to set uh, a position again. Let's see here in the viewer what happens. Uh, so here, scale elements, they all go to zero. I'm not sure if we can see anything. Uh, there's no geometry that we can see because everything is scaled to zero. But then here we set the position back to what it was. Then here we blur the position because here we have all these jagged lines because it has deleted full faces from the grid. When we blur it by the position, you see that everything is smooth. Then I'm scaling them up a little bit, not to have these really big gaps in between. And then I am extruding them. This is a little bit the same as I did in the previous tutorial, but uh, this whole area in before is new. Um, and then I am setting also, uh, let's see, it's thinking. It's a little bit of a, uh, a hard process for your uh, GPU because you have so much density. So I cannot grab this node. Yeah, I can grab it. And now I'm setting the position again. And I'm rotating them the same as what I did with the hexagons that not everything is planar and everything gets uh, their own direction. So if I go into this, so I'm taking the mesh island, putting it in the ID, and then using the ID of these separate mesh islands, all these different tiles, and giving them a rotation in the X and Y, and then rotating, rotating them. And I'm using the capture position here, when everything is into a point, to determine where the center is. And for the vector, uh, I'm just using the position. So if I turn this one off, you can see that it has no rotation. And when I turn it on, you see that it has a slight rotation. And it adds to the realism. So 
So now we're back and here I'm setting the position. And what you see here in top is just uh, joining it with the uh, original grid. And that makes that there's also a backplate, a background. That is the cement in between all these tiles. I make it come a little bit up so the tiles are not too deep. And then when we look at it in color, you see that everything is tiled like this. What we have here also is the store name attribute. And here we can see again what the uh, tile looks like. It's just a color. Uh, here I use geometry and not instance because I'm capturing the mesh island uh, index. And then I'm also using a little bit of a bump to give the tile uh, ceramic tiles a little bit of a wobble so it's not uh, uh, too uh, too equal so that is how you can create these kinds of tile patterns uh, say again uh, you can get them on blender market uh, you can get them for a small price if you don't want to build this yourself but if you want to build it yourself just go over this tutorial everything should be clear from here and uh, I hope to see you in the next one. Okay, bye.